Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're kicking off a new sponsored tutorial series here on the channel from Synology. These, as you know, are very feature-rich network-attached storage devices. And what we'll be doing in this series is picking a single feature and diving deep into it to show you how it works and how you can use it for yourself on your own Synology NAS. And in today's video, we're going to focus on active backup for business. And although this says for business, it'll work just fine on a home network as well. And what we'll be looking at today is using the active backup for business feature to back up Windows PCs on your network automatically. This will conduct a full system backup. And then after that initial backup is done, it will keep incremental copies of all the changes that occur on that PC over time. And you'll be able to go back and restore specific revisions of files if you need to, or the entire PC itself. There is no limit to the number of PCs that you can back up with this feature. You just have to have enough storage to keep everything on it. And the feature is very smart and efficient in that it will not keep more than one copy of a file, even if that file is strewn across multiple systems on your network. So you will probably have plenty of space to back up a good number of PCs on even a home network with what you have available on your Synology NAS. And we're gonna dive into this feature in just a second. Now I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Synology. And I worked with them to develop the content you're about to see. And I also had them approve this video before it was uploaded to ensure that everything was accurate. So let's get into it now and see how this active backup for business feature works. Now this feature will work with most Synology NAS devices that have an X64 processor on board like this DS1019 Plus we'll be using today. There is a full list available on the Active Backup for Business homepage if you click on the Applied Models button here and scroll down. You'll see all the models that support the feature currently. What we're going to do though is go over to the 1019 Plus's control panel here that I logged into earlier as an administrator and we're going to go over to the Package Center and install the feature to get started here. So I'm going to click on Active Backup for Business and click on Install. And this is the first step to getting everything working here. So once the package is installed, we'll jump back over and get things configured. All right, so the app is now installed on our Synology NAS here, and I'm going to click on Open to get started. Now, the first thing you're gonna to have to do is activate this feature. There is no cost to activate it, but you will need to click the activate button and log into your Synology account to get going. If your device is not connected to the internet, you can activate it offline by using a computer that is connected to the internet and typing in an activation code. So let me go ahead and get that activation step completed and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, so we've got the Active Backup for Business installed. What you'll find in your list of packages here is the app itself along with a portal that you and your users can use to restore files later. And of course you can control who has access to that portal and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm gonna zoom back out here and also pull up our file station because what'll also happen when you install this feature is that it will set up a new file share called Active Backup for Business. And this is where it's going to store all of the backups that you're doing with the Active Backup for Business application. All right, so let's get down to business here. We're going to click on PC, and as you can see here, we don't currently have any PCs backing up to the NAS, but that's going to change here in a minute. I'm gonna click on Add Device, and we'll get a little helper screen pulled up here. And what I'm gonna do is click on the 64-bit agent link that is embedded on this page. And what I would do is download this and then copy it to a, a flash drive or something that you can bring around to all the PCs in your home or office because this is the application that we're going to need to install on each of the client PCs to get this up and running. What we're going to do now is wait for that download to complete and then we're going to install it on this PC. All right, so let's step through the process of installing the agent. This is very self-explanatory. It installs like most Windows software does. And once this is done installing, what we're gonna to need to do is launch the application here and log into our NAS device. In this demo, we've got ourselves connecting here to the local IP of our NAS device. 
We have our username set as PC1 so we can better identify things as we move along here along with the password that I set for that user. There's also an option for proxies here if you're connecting over the internet or have some internal firewalls that you need to go through. I'm going to click on connect here and we're going to see a message pop up because I don't have a security certificate installed on this NAS. So I will get a warning about it. The traffic will be encrypted. It's just that we don't have a signed certificate. You can get that through Let's Encrypt if you want, but I just wanted to leave this message up on screen here so you know what to expect uh, if you are setting this up in a home or small business environment. I'm going to click to proceed anyway, and it looks as though we are ready to go. And we'll look at all these different options here as we dive further in. So I'm going to click OK here. And what's going to happen is it's going to go away, but it's going to be running uh, down here in our system tray. But now that we have the software installed, we have to jump back to our Synology desktop here. And as you can see, it's picking up this PC and it's ready to go. And so what I can do here is start the first backup uh, or we can dive into the task list here and see exactly what is going to get backed up. So what I'm going to do is click on PC1 and then click on edit so we can get a better feel for all the different things to expect here with the first backup. So we're going to call this one PC1 default. It's going to back up the entire device along with any external drives that are attached to it. You can also limit it to just the system volume, which would just be essentially whatever volume that Windows is installed on. You can also customize things here by clicking on the customize volume. Maybe you only want to do drive D, for example, and you would have the ability to do that uh, by selecting the drive here. The uh, default, though, is everything. And even if you want a specific volume, it's going to back up the entirety of that volume. You can't, at the moment, specify particular folders or files. It's just going to grab everything and pull it across the network. You also have the option to enable data transfer compression and encryption. You can also set bandwidth consumption limits, and this might be really useful if you are on a Wi-Fi connection, for example, to prevent oversaturating the connection in the middle of the workday. You can also shut down the computer after a scheduled backup happens. You can prevent it from entering sleep, and you can also wake the computer from sleep to run the backup if you need it to do that. You can set a schedule here. By default, it's going to go weekdays at 3 a.m., but of course you can adjust this. You can also set it to only back up manually. You also have the ability to do things based on events. So for example, you can have the computer back up whenever the user locks the screen, for example. So if you have somebody who's changing files quite frequently, it might be helpful to do a backup when they head out on break or go to lunch or something like that. So you have uh, a lot of options here for when those things fire off. You can also enable a retention policy here. And so by default, this is off, but we can enable it here. We can keep 10 versions of files, and you can also decide to uh, keep versions based on a number of days. And then you can set a more advanced uh, setting here where you can be very specific and granular about all the different options that you want to save files for. So there's a lot you can dive into here. I'm going to have a go on the advanced retention policy here to get started. All right, so now that we have everything configured, let's go ahead and start our first backup. This one is going to take the longest because this is the first time this uh, computer is getting backed up. So what's going to happen here is we'll uh, likely transfer over about 100 gigabytes based on what I have currently installed on this PC. And while this first backup will take quite a while, subsequent backups will be much quicker because it's only going to back up the files that actually changed. Now this computer is on Ethernet, so we're running at gigabit speeds here, so this backup won't take all that long. But while this is backing up, let me show you the templating feature that they have here because you saw all of those options that we had for setting the backup. Well, if we go over to templates, you can see where it got those settings from. So right now it's got a default for Windows PCs. And if I click edit here, you can see all of the very same settings that we just saw uh, on the individual PC setup here. So you can get everything kind of established the way you want it in the template. And then of course you could adjust 
on each individual PC after that. So we're going to let this thing continue backing up. It'll probably take it a little bit longer here. And once it is done, we'll jump back and see what we have when this backup is complete. All right, so the backup is completed. And as you can see here, we have a successful backup of the PC1 computer. I started a second PC uh, here also, which is currently backing up, and we'll look at some of the file efficiencies of this arrangement in a second. But let's take a look and see what we got here. So I'm gonna jump over to the portal. And as an administrator, I have the ability to see all of the computers that are backing up to this particular NAS. And I can jump into PC1 here and browse through the entire file system if I want. And what I can do when I find a file that needs to be restored is I can either download it to my computer or whatever computer I'm on, or I can restore it directly to the PC that it came from. And this could be really useful if you're running a remote call center. A user can call you up saying, hey, I need to restore that file from last night. You can jump in here, click the button, and restore that file to the user remotely, and it will show up right where it was backed up from on the user's PC without you having to go in remotely and drop the file there yourself. All right, so now I've added a file to my desktop here, just a text file that says this is a test. And what I'm gonna do now is fire off another backup to see how large this next backup might be. Because remember, we're only gonna back up what has changed. So we're gonna go over here to PC1 and I'm going to click on backup again. And this backup is going to go a lot quicker because it's not going to grab everything, it's just going to grab what has changed since the last time. So as you can see here, the total backup size is only 16.9 gigabytes versus the 100 plus that it had to back up before. So once this is done, we'll see if that file showed up and then we'll do another backup after changing that file and see how we can access the revisions. All right, so we have finished the second backup and we jumped into my desktop folder as it appears in the active backup for business portal. And sure enough, here is the text file that we created after the first backup, but before the second one. So that second backup picked up that file and made it available to us for downloading or restoration. And if you look down here, you can see that there are two backups that have taken place on this date. And if I click down here and click on the earlier one, you will see the file is not there because on the first backup, that file didn't exist, but on the second one, it did. So this is how you would be able to browse through prior revisions of files by navigating through this uh, timeline here at the bottom. All right, so that second computer just finished backing up, and let's take a look at what the storage implications of that are. So here you can see both computers have successfully backed themselves up. And if we go over here to storage and look at the data reduction ratio, you can see that we save 66 and a half gigabytes by deduplicating files that both machines had in common. So although we have safely stored 241 gigabytes of data, we are only physically storing 174.8 because again, those systems had files in common that only need to be stored once on the NAS here. Now the whole backup system here is tied to the username and password that you have set up for that user on the NAS already. And what I'm gonna do is show you how to apply a group level permission so you can very efficiently roll this feature out if you already have users established. So what I'm gonna do here is go over to the main menu. I'm gonna click on control panel. I'm going to go to user and group, and I'm going to click on the group tab here. And I have most of my users set up as users. So I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to click on applications. And what I'm gonna do here is apply the allow for the portal and the agent. I don't need to enable active backup for business here because I don't want my users to have access to the administrative portion of this endeavor here. I just want their agent to be able to back up. And in this case, I want these users to be able to access the portal for file restoration. I'm gonna click save here. And now any user that is in the user group will be able to access this feature right out of the gate without anything other than their username and password. 
Now we can also set this specifically for individual users. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to click on the user tab here and select my daughter Ellie. And I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see what we're looking at. I'm going to go over to applications and I'm going to just move this over a little bit so you can see what we're looking at. And as you can see here, the portal is allowed because that was what we allowed at the group level. But I don't want Ellie to gain access to that portal. So I'm going to deny this just for her and allow her to continue using the agent for backups. And so you can very easily go through here and set specific permissions, even if you set something at the group level. So now let's talk about file restoration. You saw how the administrator can restore files remotely from the portal interface. If you grant the users access to the portal, they will also be able to restore their files. So as an example here, what we're gonna do is wipe out that text document that we just created. And now the panic sets in, but there's no need to panic because if the user had a successful backup of that file, all they need to do is log into the Synology NAS with their username and password like they normally would for other functions. And you can remember we gave this user access to the portal, so we'll jump into the portal. They'll be able to see their computer and their computer only, and we'll navigate over to where that file was last seen, which was on the desktop. And sure enough, that file we deleted is here. And what I can do is just click on Restore, and this will put it right back where uh, it was located originally. And I bet you by the time we minimize this web browser here, that file, yep, is back. And we are able to get back into that file and pick up where we last left off. Now let's say the computer you backed up has a total hard drive failure. What you can do is pull out that bad drive, put in a brand new one, and then jump over to your control panel on your Synology NAS here. Click on the computer in the device list under the Active Backup for Business package. Go to Restore and just select Entire Device. And what this will guide you through is the process of downloading the Active Backup for Business Recovery Media Creator. And what this media creator will do will create a restoration drive that has the entire system on it. So you plug that drive into the computer, boot it, and when the process is done, that computer with the new hard drive will have everything back in the same place it was before the hard drive crashed using the last known good backup that you have stored here on your Synology NAS. And this is just one of the backup features that Active Backup for Business can do. It can also do file servers, shared files that you have on your network, and virtual machines. And we're not going to have time to get to all of those today, but you can see, I think, how useful this tool will be, not only in a business environment, but also in a home environment where you've got a lot of PCs on the network and you don't want to have to keep thinking about how to back them up. Now, our next video is going to be about Active Backup for Google Workspace and Microsoft 365. These two applications will back up data stored on your cloud services and put that data safely on your NAS, which will be under your direct control on your local network. Backups are important even for the cloud, and we're gonna look at doing that in video two. And after that, we're gonna look at backing up the entire NAS once we have all these backups stored on it. So we've got a lot of backing up to do here, and we'll be uh, continuing on with this series in the very near future. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman, and I want to thank Synology for their support of the channel. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht. Amda Brown. Matt Zagaya. And Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
and don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv/s.